The forecast for Aaron may be clearing up, but what comes next might just be worst. I've reviewed all of the latest data and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm looking at coming up right now as we begin the show with our tropical update. Hi everybody, welcome into the channel. Jason is my name. I have been tracking these storms for a long time, folks, and I am glad that you are here on this Friday, August the 15th, to track them with me. We've got storms and rumors of storms. We're going to look at all of it right here. I've got a bunch of maps. We're going to fly, folks. We're going to get through all of these maps today in a reasonable time. We're going to start here by taking a look at Tropical Storm Air and looking much more symmetrical today than yesterday. Why is that? Well, convection is starting to get more vertical stacked. We're going to look at that, but it's being chased across the Atlantic by something. Look at this milky substance. What is this? Well, as you may guess by looking here at Africa, this is a big Saharan dust plume coming off the coast of Africa in hot pursuit of Aaron as it races to the west. Now we've got storms coming in after Aaron, waves coming off of Africa, which we'll look at. Some of those may pose a problem for us down the road. Here is Aaron sitting right here just to the east of the Antilles. Maximum sustained winds are up 70 miles per hour and it is moving to the west, northwest at 17 miles per hour. Now that it has become more vertically stacked, it's taken on a northerly component, a little bit of one anyway. There's your forecast track. It is expected to become a hurricane imminently and potentially a major hurricane as we move through the weekend. Most guidance is showing that as it gets into our power zone. We've got a lot of warm ocean water over here in this area. The shear is going to get more favorable in terms of the upper level environment and the dry air is not that much of a problem even though it's being chased by it we shouldn't see that much of an impact here are all of the guidance and all of the models that kind of show us what is going on with the intensity forecast most of the hurricane models here bring the intensity up into category three which is a major hurricane or category four status a lot of them actually get into category four status one that brings it all the way up here into category five status the icon model is very very strong and it is very close to the coast but everybody else is pretty far away you can see the canadian ensembles uh, return this thing back out into the atlantic from where it came nothing even approaching the coast a couple of them take it very close to bermuda so we'll have to watch that here are the hurricane models and all of these latest runs continue to curve it out safely to the west of uh, the United or the, of Bermuda and to the east of Cape Hatteras, not looking to hit any land. Fortunately, on the hurricane models, here's the GFS tracks as well. Here are all of those tracks. The mean takes it down to a basically 956 millibar low as it passes to the east of Bermuda, splits the uprights between Bermuda and Cape Hatteras again. I'll show the European ensembles in a minute. The scariest model of all is the Icon, and it continues to be an outlier. Here's what it does is it brings this storm, look at this, as it gets down in the Caribbean, it fills those warm waters, 919 millibar low approaching. We're getting close to category five strength. Look at this. 912, I think it gets down to 912 is kind of the lowest pressure there, but to 914 off the southeast coast scrapes Hatteras with some rain and definitely heavy winds. If this were to happen, we'd have a lot of beach erosion down here. High wave action, high surf, we're going to see waves come in anyway, even if this thing does pass way out to the east. It is still going to be a problem in terms of wave action and rip currents. There is the upper level height the mid-level height anomaly map, folks. We've been watching this, and an, if, if you're expecting a landfalling hurricane, what you don't want to see is a trough along the east coast. Most of us do want to see a trough along the east coast because what does that mean? Well, it means that storms are going to get deflected out, sort of like a shield. And as we go on out in time, this is as we approach uh, Saturday and Sunday. There's Aaron working in north of the islands. You can see that. There's the big ridge in the eastern United States. If this was linking up with a big ridge out here in the Atlantic, I'd be really concerned. But look what's happening. We've got a big ridge going up in Canada. We talked about this yesterday. This ridge in the center of the United States here in the Mississippi Valley, it's going to be migrating back to the west. That allows, all of that allows this trough here to push down into the northern Atlantic. You've already got a little bit of a weakness out here, a little bit of a ridge trying to build back in. What that does is it allows a door to be opened here and here for Aaron to eventually track through. It creates a weakness as this ridge slides back this way. This one does not get allowed to build in over top and so the steering pattern is pretty straightforward. 
ridge out west. See how it migrates back into the Four Corners region? You got this big kind of broad troughing here along the coast. Look what happens. There goes Aaron right out in. It joins with this big trough. You get a big weakness in the northern Atlantic now, and ridging starts to build in underneath that. Now, when that happens, we're going to see more waves track along the southern tier and maybe get underneath this ridge and try to sneak in toward the United States or into the Gulf. That's what's going on. Look over here in Africa, folks. This is the windy map. I'm going to zoom this out. This is Africa, and you see all of these waves. Tropical activity is not going to stop anytime soon when you have this much wave action coming off of Africa. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. You've got lots of waves here over Africa, and these are going to continue to move off into the main development region. Some of these may develop, some of these may not develop. In fact, here's what is going on with the GFS model. Check this out. So, last several runs of the GFS has had uh, some noise. There goes Aaron out as we get on into next Thursday. But look what happens underneath, okay? You've got that ridge, we looked at it building in. Here comes a wave, there's another one right on its heels. They're starting to develop already. And it takes these waves on a similar route to Aaron, but it's got a better steering pattern uh, in terms of keeping things to the south. You've got high pressure out here in the Atlantic Ridge over the top. And it takes this right into the Southern United States. Now I'm not forecasting this, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but several different operational runs here and there have had this over the past 48 hours or so and we're going to continue to watch that even the European model has something similar there goes Aaron out next weekend and then the following week look what happens we get uh, some action over here we get a couple of waves moving across doesn't look all that impressive but we start to see some development here off the southeast coast and certainly some of the ensemble members develop uh, some of these waves as they track across and we may have a much more favorable upper level pattern by then as big ridging kind of builds over the top and we start to see um, you know that southern track become much more available there is the european ensemble probabilities for development we see Aaron out here in the middle of the screen with all the big bright probabilities around it definitely a, you know that's a hundred percent we can ignore that got a little bit of an low that's trying to develop off North Carolina that will scoot out to sea. But look what happens next. We start to see some noise down here in the central uh, Atlantic and we go on way out in time. See how Aaron goes up, but look at these new probabilities down here. We start to see a much more southern track that is concerning as we move into the heart of hurricane tracking season, folks. So we're going to watch that. Here's the European Ensemble individual member run. There goes Aaron. See, they all pretty much recurve except for one little outlier here, but everybody else recurves. Now we're starting to get some more action down here. And I'll go to a better screen here so we can see this. But uh, you're starting to get a little bit more action from some of these other tropical waves down here. So the models are starting to pick up on this. The ensembles are starting to pick up on it. And as we go out at a time, you see more and more ensemble members showing something moving into the Caribbean. You've got a lot of noise here in the Caribbean, we get out to 10 days out, folks. So we're going to have to watch this very, very, very carefully. I've got uh, you covered there. I'm be watching it every day. I'm not just watching Aaron. We've got, got a lot to look at out here. And certainly Aaron is a problem and uh, hopefully not a problem for land. It doesn't look like it is, but we've got other systems out here that are coming in behind it. It's going to be a very, very active hurricane season. We've got a lot to watch. We're gonna to continue to watch it here. Right now, we're gonna watch your weather IQ question come up on the screen. I hope you know the answer to it because it's related to the forecast as we go through the weekend. We're gonna take a look at that weekend forecast, see who's going to see rain, who's going to see sunny conditions, who's gonna be hot, who's gonna be fall-like if there is such a thing coming up in the forecast. And we've got severe weather, including tornadoes and large hail coming up to take a look at as well. That's all coming up right now. All right, it's Friday, folks. Feel free to take off early and head out and get your weekend started off early. I've got an IQ question for you that's on the easy side. I wanted to take it easy on you on a Friday, so here we go. What type of front is associated with long periods of rain and cloudy weather? Occluded front, cold front, warm front, or stationary front? If you know the answer, type it in the comment section. If you don't, hang out to the end of the show. I'll reveal it to you, and you can go tell all your friends what you learned here on Cold Rain's Weather World. You may not like the forecast, but I promise you will always learn something here if you pay attention on Cold Rain's Weather World. That is my promise to you. Now, I promise to you that we are going to take a look at the severe weather threat and the weekend forecast coming right up. 
Getting the weekend started off with a bang in the Midwest and the Northern Plains with severe weather potentially breaking out this afternoon from places like Madison, Wisconsin, all the way back through Aberdeen and Pierre, South Dakota, could see tornadoes, wind, and hail. And folks, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give the content a like, leave a comment. I always wanna know where you're commenting from. Certainly, if there's anything I can pray over for you, please put it in the comments and let me know. I always wanna pray for you. I pray for you every day, generically, but if there's something specific I can pray about, let let me know and uh, certainly continue to keep us in your prayers as well. But I really appreciate all of you who have uh, joined the team lately and uh, continue to stay subscribed and tune in, turn those alerts on, and I'll let you know where the notifications on. I'll let you know when uh, things change and things are changing all the time. In fact, this afternoon, the sky could be changing rather quickly up here in northern Wisconsin. Could see a tornado or two drop out as supercells develop and potentially increase the tornado and hail threat as a little piece of energy moves along a boundary up there. Of course, uh, wind is going to be the primary threat this afternoon afternoon across much of that entire area. Tomorrow, much the same areas, probably going to see a slight risk at some point once the threat area specifically gets better defined, but generally from eastern Montana all the way through my, uh, um, basically Michigan, again, you're going to see potential for severe weather. Tornadoes really focused here on South Dakota, where there's a little bit more shear in the atmosphere here, and a wind, hail being a threat, and you'll see that continue into Sunday as well. This is your surface map. Got a low pressure in Canada bringing a cold front through out ahead of that. Severe weather possible and heavy rain. We're going to see a lot of thunderstorms uh, work on a tropical air mass to drop lots of rain quickly. So really over the next few days, we're going to have a flooding threat, particularly up here in the Midwest. Frontal zone slipping to the south slowly with time. We'll focus the best chance of the showers and thunderstorms out into the southeast as we go on out in time. But more energy coming into the northeast will bring some rounds of scattered showers back into your area too through the weekend and we're going to get a wet start up here in the northwest as troughs working in bringing some fairly heavy rain up into the Seattle and Portland areas. Heavy rain threat over the next couple of days really focused here in the Midwest. Anywhere in this circle you got to watch out for flooding alerts the next couple of days. We've seen a lot of flash floods over the last few weeks down here in South Texas too and South Arizona, southern Arizona, and I'll show you why Texas is going to see potential flooding, particularly in just a minute. Heat advisories up through the mid Missouri Valley, through the great, uh, through the um, Gulf Coast states, down here in Florida. We can see heat index is running up into the one. 105, 110 range potentially. So if you gotta be outside for a long period of time, stay hydrated and take breaks. A couple of air quality alerts for wildfire smoke in Colorado, Idaho, and Montana looking at some red flag warnings. So be careful about burning there. As we look out at the future radar, this basically early afternoon, got some thunderstorms already firing up here in Minnesota and Iowa, Four Corners region showers moving into Texas. What we've got down here is a tropical disturbance. I didn't show this before, but this area here has a chance of development quickly into a tropical depression before it moves into New Mexico or Southeast Texas. And you're gonna see heavy rain associated with that. That's gonna be the main rainfall threat. There's your rain moving into the Northwest with that trough. As we get into the afternoon, there's a thunderstorm complex moving through Minnesota and uh, into Wisconsin could bring some heavy weather up in your area. Monsoon will flow intact, a few showers and thunderstorms out into the South and to the East and to the interior mid-Atlantic and there comes the rain into the northwest and as we go through the nighttime hours we could see a rather potent complex move through South Dakota into Minnesota bringing some thunder for you all as you wake up and get your day started tomorrow. Scattered showers around Michigan and there's that trough pushing into the northwest bringing rain around in the morning. Tomorrow afternoon yeah, we get thunderstorms to dodge in the east again. Not too bad, just scattered showers and thunderstorms. Keep your radar app handy across parts of the south as well into the monsoonal sections of the Four Corners region back into the northern plains again and back to Wisconsin where we see more severe weather possible. And in the northwest, you're going to keep the rain around. So we go through the nighttime hours. Some of that sticks around, particularly where we have some energy moving in to the northern plains. That frontal boundary is pretty well defined here with the model trying to light up thunderstorms all along it tomorrow morning. I'm not sure that'll be exactly how that plays out or actually Sunday morning, but uh, you head off to church in Maine, you're going to see some rain probably in here in the Midwest as well. Everybody else looking pretty good. California, you guys are looking good. Nevada, not uh, a lot of things to interfere with your outdoor plans in terms of shower activity. LA Basin, not bad. And uh, down here in and the monsoonal sections of the um, United States. We're seeing plenty of that monsoonal flow across the Gulf Coast states. There's your focus. And as we go through the evening hours, Sunday uh, overnight, 
another little MCS working through Iowa and Minnesota, and then more showers back into Montana and Oregon. That's your precipitation forecast. Overall, not too bad for much of the country. Uh, except for the northwest, maybe the northern plains where we'll see the biggest focus of rain. The coolest weather is going to be across the northern tier, Maine this afternoon, up into the northern sections of the northern plains, into the northwest. It's going to be rather cool and rainy up there. Everywhere else is going to be warm. Not too bad, though, out here in California, 90s, yeah, you can handle that. And then the southeast or the southwest, also not as bad as it's been. Instead of 120, we've got 102, 104 in Phoenix, and then, of course, in the Central Plains. That's where it's going to be hot and muggy up along the Mississippi Valley back into Florida with temperatures in the 90s approaching hundreds in the Central Plains and upper 80s for much of the Midwest and the Southeast. Tomorrow, much the same story, warm in the Central Plains and into Florida with 80s and upper 80s back into the Mid-Atlantic and Midwest Great Lakes and even 80s up into Maine and then back into the northern tier it's going to be in the 70s and even cooler than that potentially in the pacific northwest california looking good out on the beaches you're looking at 60s okay that's fallish right uh, then it warms up a little bit more in the desert southwest as we get on into sunday and then the 90s cools back a little bit we're not seeing as many hundreds as we get into sunday uh, but the 90s extend back into the mid-atlantic and to the southeast and a little bit uh, chillier as a trough starts to work in across the northern tier opening the door and the escape route for air and that's your weekend forecast hope you've got something fun to do but just keep your radar app handy if you live in the southeast particularly up here in the north as well and in the four corners region and up into the northwest that's where you're likely to find the most rain over the course of the weekend i'm going to wrap things up with the weather iq and space and geological update although that will be very, very all right quick solar update nothing going on kp flat no sunspots they're all decaying nothing going on from a solar flaring or filament standpoint the only thing we've got is this coronal hole Expect to see an enhanced solar wind stream over the course of the next several days, and that potentially could put us in minor geomagnetic storm conditions. Nothing happening on the earthquake front. Just wanted to show you. I'm not lying to you. There it is. Zero going on there. Moon is at 57.7%. Third quarter moon, and it's going down to a new moon on August the 23rd. And we have less than 40 days until fall, 38 to be exact. I cannot wait for fall. I'm looking forward to it. Already seeing fall decorations and Halloween decorations coming out at all of the major uh, box stores, folks. It is getting to be that time, and it is now time to answer our weather IQ question. What type of front is associated with long periods of rainy and cloudy conditions? And the answer of all four of these is a stationary front, as you may have guessed. We're going to see a stationary front across the northern tier, and that's going to be the focus for showers and thunderstorms, potentially severe weather and flooding over the course of the next several days. So keep your umbrellas handy and those weather apps handy as well. And one more thing to note, on August 15th, 1945, Emperor Hiro Hirohito announced Japan's official surrender bringing effectively bringing World War II in the Pacific to an end. This is celebrated as VJ Day. Okay, if you didn't know that, now you do. That's what happened on August the 15th in 1945. Now you know history, now you know the weather, and of course, I wish you all a wonderful weekend. I'll have my son with me. We'll do a couple of shorts this weekend with him, and we'll be back tomorrow with a quick update and recap of the tropics and what's going on there. But anyway, I will keep you posted if anything is happening. Otherwise, you have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you back soon. Take care, folks.